The Endless Forest was a vast woodland located in the Scarith Basin and bisected by the Black River. It covered more of Thray than any other named region, and was the planet's most biologically diverse area. Though rich in stone and wood, the Endless Forest was poor in metals, and was considered one of the most dangerous regions of Thray, prompting many of its plants and animals to develop defensive poisons, which were advertised through bright colors and threatening vocalizations. The forest was kept alive by seedles, large, lumbering creatures who, upon reaching adulthood, would root themselves to the ground and regenerate the land with new trees. The forest provided an abundance of fruit, including peachberries and bluemouth fruit. The fruit of the arara tree was especially sought after by stonewood apothecaries. The forest was also home to Oleica staba, one of the great trees and patron to the stonewood clan. It was said to have given rise to all the trees in the forest, hearing and feeling everything heard and felt within it. Fizzgigs were small mammalian creatures native to the endless forest and the sigil animal of the Stonewood clan. They were quadrupeds sporting small paws which were sometimes concealed beneath their fur, which they typically only used when walking for short distances. For longer distances, they preferred to roll into a ball which could move at considerable speed. Their skulls and coat were especially thick in order to protect themselves while moving in this fashion. Most specimens were buff-colored, though melanists sometimes occurred. They communicated primarily through a series of yaps, and would roar when threatened. They also possessed tear ducts, and would weep when saddened. Despite their appealing exterior, fizzgigs could be ferocious predators, having one of the largest bite radii among the animals of Thray and possessing a second row of teeth around their uvula. When working in packs, fizzgigs could bring down animals many times larger than them. Roughly as tall as a podling's knee, pluffums were characterized by their large eyes, three nostrils, bright green fur and webbed fingers. They were equally at home in trees and the forest floor, and primarily. Why fed on tree bark? Pluffums retained their disproportionately large eyes even in adulthood a trait thought to be a defense mechanism which prompted would-be predators to find the animal appealing and adopt it. A small flightless bird found scurrying across the floor of the endless forest the Cydetic is notable for possessing beady eyes that move independently on short crustacean-like stalks. It has no wings at all and its small withered arms do not seem to serve any function. Fortunately's beak is very strong and can be used to easily break open seed pods and nutshells. In the wild the plumage of a cydetic can flourish into a variety of colors but when raised in captivity the thin fur-like feathers never develop beyond their original green. No creature better exemplifies the connection between all live on Thray than the humble thrushbog. Both plant and animal individual being an interconnected nest they grow from the knots and burls of trees in the endless forest. A thrush bog has a slender neck that terminates in a round stomach chamber. It also has two petals at the top of its stem that pick up vibrations just like ears. At the base of the thrush bog sits a bowl-shaped shell that anchors the creature to a host tree. In this symbiotic relationship they share their nutrients and collected rainwater with the tree in exchange for shelter and safety. Thrushbog inhabit trees in groups each member connected by thin fibrous tubers that run within and over the tree's bark and flesh. These families are also linked to further thrushbog communities situated in neighboring trees via the root system of their host. Filiite were talking rocks recognizable by their large eyebrows lips and noses. Immobile creatures their main source of food was the lichens and mosses that grew on the inside of their mouths though they would also eat any animals foolish enough to enter their mouths and consume them in a digestion process that could last a full season. Their language was unintelligible and differed across regions making translations very difficult. Aura was the only being to ever successfully hold a conversation with a philite, though she found the creature to be an overwhelming bore. Small balloon-shaped insects. 0.2s, greater than firebugs give off a warm amber glow. At birth a young firebug's body inflates with natural luminous gases rising into the air and not touching the ground until death. They are used by the Stonewood clan as a means of illumination. Vindelsalso known as grass dancers to the Spritten clan were photosynthetic characterized by their bipedal stance pearl-shaped heads and crown of leaves. 
when faced with predators vindals would rotate their arms so quickly that they would become airborne. This process was energetically costly and their bright coloration made them an easy target when exhausted. Alizes were large predatory birds recognizable by their dark purple satin plumage and large bright reflective ice these formidable hunters could lift a fully grown podling off the ground. They possessed enormous wingspans that allowed them to cover a hundred wheels of hunting ground in a night and could turn their heads in full rotation by detaching their neck bones from their skulls allowing no prey to escape the scope of their vision. Infant alizes had even larger eyes than grown ones and a series of thin feathers that stuck straight up like antennae. Gelfling considered them adorable and would adopt any that fell from their nests often unaware of how large and fearsome they would grow to be. Boverts were amphibians native to the northern mountains and the base of the endless forest. They had four eyes and ginger fur as well as spring-loaded legs which they used to stamp their prey to death. The rotting flesh which thus accumulated between their digits gave the animals an unpleasant smell. Teberfrocks were small large-eyed mammals sporting brindled fur and long antennae native to the endless forest the Spriton Plains and the valley of the URRU. They lived near water sources to drink and wash their paws they had a reputation for being in cautiouses they slept most of the day in shallow burrows or fallen logs this exposing themselves to predators. Gelfling of the Stonewood and Spriton clans prevented the species extinction by moving sleeping specimens to safer locations. Gobbles are tiny spherical bulbs that grow on the forest floor in clusters of thousands. At first glance they may seem harmless but nothing could be further from the truth. Point 4s, greater than these opportunistic predators each have an oversized mouth ringed with rows of sharp, needle-like teeth. A colony of gobbles can survive on a relatively small amount of prey, a necessary capability for a creature that is permanently anchored in place, gaining sustenance solely from the misadventure of other animals. Upon feeding, a mass of gobbles is able to redistribute nutrients to other less well-fed gobbles patches via a stem network, demonstrating that there is more to these creatures than their rapacious appetites. Ipsi were large, dark green insects that walked on their hind legs. They were generally peaceful creatures until the arrival of mating season, when two male Ipsi would fight for the affections of a female. The contests were usually ceremonial and the loser would often be left unscathed while the winner would be pulled limb from limb by the female after mating. A popular pastime among children from the Stonewood clan was collecting large groups of Ipsi and staging battles between them, though they would always return the creatures to the wild once the combat had reached its conclusion. Bright Shez were creatures commonly found in the endless forest. Each creature possessed a three-pronged, feathered proboscis that allowed it to sense minute changes in air quality. This ability allowed them to sift through thousands of scents and locate small prey with pinpoint accuracy. Normally moving in an awkward waddle, upon sensing prey they would change to a headlong sprint and catch its target before it was even aware of the attack. Riddits were amphibians characterized by their bulbous eyes, thick manes running down their backs and croaking calls from which they got their name. They possessed powerful claws which they used to dig burrow networks beneath tree roots, the largest of which included breeding chambers. Riddits would sometimes dig so many tunnels that they would cause trees to uproot and provoke cave-ins. Lumpunums were creatures notable for their large oval-shaped heads, long bodies and thick legs. Their rock-like skin textures and slow movements made them hard to detect, and they were thus rarely found by predators. They were easily raised in captivity, as their low metabolism allowed them to survive on a diet of nothing but grass blades, the Vapra considered their nearly boneless flesh a delicacy. Humheads were tentacled mollusks that started life at sea, only to migrate to the forest via rivers upon attaining adulthood. Their large eyes gave them superb vision at night and in murky waters, when threatened, they collapsed their bodies and retreated into their shells. When traveling to the endless forest, one might be tempted to pat the innocent-looking two-eyed sticklers inviting, crystalline fur. A tiny head of poison tips every hair on a two-eyed stickler's body. On contact, the victim's muscles instantly lock up and become racked with searing pain that can last hours. 
Feathered pinches were known to use their front claws to attach themselves to the underbellies of larger creatures and travel to more fertile hunting grounds. Once attached, they were extremely difficult to displace and would only detach themselves when they sensed nearby prey. Their favorite meal was the bublup, which they picked apart leg by leg before consuming the body. Seedles are massive, gentle creatures that hold within them the secret to the endless forest's expansion and regeneration. A juvenile seedle has slitted glowing eyes, broad wooden teeth, and a young forest growing from its body. When a seedle reaches adulthood, it adopts a prone position, ceases all movement, and begins to grow roots. This marks the end of the seedle's life cycle, but the creature is far from dead. From its body a mass of new forest growth sprouts, it is no longer a singular sentient creature but a wellspring of woodland life.